Hi, my name is Trevor Sullivan, a Microsoft MVP for Windows PowerShell, and I'm also the Curriculum Director for Microsoft Azure Training Content at Cloud Academy. If you're interested in learning more about Cloud Academy, feel free to check us out at cloudacademy.com. Today we're going to talk about the Docker Toolkit and how you can rapidly get started with Docker. If you're new to Docker and you're not quite sure how to get started, you're going to want to continue watching. The first thing that we're going to do is download and install the Docker Toolkit. Now, the Docker Toolkit depends on having some type of Docker host available. So in this case, we're actually going to use VirtualBox. Now, I've already installed VirtualBox on my system here, and I'll allow you to go figure out how to do that yourself. But just understand that I've got VirtualBox installed, and I don't currently have any virtual machines provisioned. So we're going to go ahead and download this Docker Toolbox, and install it locally. While the Docker Toolbox is downloading, we'll go ahead and talk about what we're going to do next. After we install the Docker Toolbox, we're going to have the Docker Engine, which is the Docker command. We're going to have the Docker Machine command that allows us to manage Docker hosts from the command line. We're also going to have the Docker Compose utility, which allows us to create multi-container applications. And then we're also going to get a really cool tool called Kitematic. What Kitematic is is basically a graphical interface that allows us to easily build a Docker host on VirtualBox, and then we can start deploying containers to it. So now we've downloaded the Docker Toolbox, so we'll go ahead and install it. We'll go ahead and just hit Continue and step through the wizard. After the installation wizard runs, we'll go ahead and run the Kitematic utility. Okay, so we now have two options in our application menu in our Mac. We now have the Docker Quick Start Terminal, which will take us directly to a terminal session, but we also have this visual tool called Kitematic, which is currently in beta. So let's go ahead and fire that up. So I'm going to go to Spotlight here using Command Space, and I'm going to fire up Kitematic. You can also run Kitematic on Windows as well, but in this case, I'm running it on a Mac. When Kitematic starts up, it's automatically going to create a new Docker engine. Now, the Docker engine runs on Linux, not Mac OS, so it's going to actually provision automatically for us a VirtualBox VM. Now, it's going to do this by using what's called Boot to Docker. Boot to Docker is a very lightweight 27 megabyte ISO that allows us to rapidly build up a Docker host or Linux VM that we can then deploy Docker containers to. So it's going through right now and creating that new Docker VM. As you can see, in literally a matter of seconds, Kitematic created a new Docker host for us on VirtualBox, and we didn't even have to do anything to make that happen. All we had to do was make sure that Oracle VirtualBox was pre-installed, and Kitematic did the rest for us. So now if we just right-click on this VM and look at Show, we can look at the console of the VM, and we'll see that it's running Boot to Docker. It's currently in the process of booting up, and as soon as the VM finishes booting up, Kitematic will automatically connect to it so that we can then issue container-related commands against it. In the VirtualBox VM, we now have the console available to us, which means that the VM has completed booting up. So we'll go ahead and just close that out and just tell it to continue running in the background, because after this point, we're going to manage that virtual machine through Kitematic instead of directly through VirtualBox. Now you can start up and shut down the VM from VirtualBox if you want to, but Kitematic might temporarily lose its connection while it attempts to reconnect to that virtual machine after you shut it down and start it back up.
So now we are in Kitematic, and what we have here is basically a list of images, which are container images, not virtual machine images or operating system images. And these container images can be used to provision new containers onto our Docker host. So the Docker host is the, the Linux virtual machine that's running the Docker engine or the Docker daemon. And we're going to take these images and send them down to that virtual machine, and we're going to run them as containers. So in this example, what we're going to do is run a WordPress instance. So the first thing that we need to do is actually run a MySQL container. So we'll search the Docker hub for MySQL, and you'll see that there's an official MySQL image available. Now all we have to do is click on create, and that is automatically going to send down the command to the Docker daemon to start downloading the image for MySQL locally onto itself, and then it's going to provision a new container instance from that MySQL image. So while we're doing that, let's click on new again, and then we're going to search for WordPress. So WordPress, for those of you who are new to it, is a PHP-enabled application that typically runs on a web server like IIS or Apache or Nginx, and it's basically a content management solution. In fact, I use that to run my own website at treversullivan.net. So as you can see, there's an official WordPress image here as well. And although my Mac is running a little bit slowly because it's running that virtual machine in the background, uh, it is loading here, and I can simply click the Create button to create a new WordPress container as well. So let's go ahead and click on that. It's going to connect to the Docker Hub and download that image again onto the virtual machine. Now it's important to understand that we're not actually downloading the Docker image onto the Mac. What, is, what we're actually doing is sending a command using the Docker uh, command line tool to the Docker daemon that's running inside that Linux VM inside of Oracle VirtualBox, and we're telling it to go provision a new container. So everything that's happening here is actually happening in the context of that Docker machine. So now that the Docker image for MySQL is just about finished downloading, it's going to go ahead and provision a new container instance from it. The WordPress image is almost finished downloading as well. So both of these containers are going to launch roughly at the same time. Now, there's a little bit of configuration that we have to do to both of the Docker containers in order to get them to communicate with each other. Because each of the Docker containers is running in isolated space, we actually have to configure the TCP ports that are exported from the containers so that we can connect the containers together. The MySQL container is now launching for the first time. One of the nice things about Kitematic is that we're able to see the container's logs, or the standard output from the container, to see what kind of configuration might be required. As you can see, the MySQL instance is telling us that we need to specify the root password, or we can tell it to set a random root password. So what we're going to do is copy this environment variable, MySQL root password, go over into the settings, and add it. So we're going to go under the containers environment variables, and we're just going to call this Cloud Academy PW exclamation point. So that's now going to be the password for our MySQL instance. So let's go ahead and save the changes to that, and then we'll come back over to the Home tab, and you'll see that the container automatically picked up on that change, and the MySQL daemon is now starting up. Let's go ahead and check on the status of our WordPress instance. Our WordPress instance has finished downloading the image, and it's still in the process of provisioning the, provisioning the container. Our MySQL container is finishing the bootstrap process so that the MySQL daemon will start listening on a TCP port. Now, in the case of the MySQL image, you'll see that it automatically mapped internal port 3306 to external port 32769. So what we're going to do is configure our WordPress instance to point to this access URL that's provided, again, conveniently, by Kitematic. So let's go ahead and copy that and prepare for our WordPress launch.
In the MySQL container, you can now see that it's ready for connections. So it's gone through and configured the MySQL instance for the first time. It set the root password according to the environment variable that we configured for this container. And at the bottom here, it says that the MySQL daemon is ready for connections on TCP 3306. Now, even though it says that it's listening on 3306, that is the internal port number. And we're going to access the MySQL instance on the external IP address of 192.168.99.100, and we're going to access it on port 32769. So our WordPress instance looks like it's launched here, and so we now have a new container instance from the WordPress image. So if we wanted, we could actually create a second WordPress instance and a third, and so on and so forth. But we need to go ahead and configure our WordPress container. As you can see, it's, it's throwing an error saying that we're missing the WordPress DB host, and the MySQL TCP environment variables. So what we can do is actually just specify the WordPress DB host and specify the hostname and port, which would actually be the TCP uh, or the IP address and the TCP port. So let's go ahead and add the new environment variable here. So WordPress DB host, and then it's 192.168.99.100 port 32769. Let's go ahead and save that and switch back to the Home tab. The next thing that we're going to see is that we haven't specified the database username and password. So let's go ahead and specify the WordPress DB password and set it to the same thing that we set the password to on the MySQL container. So if I recall correctly, the password was Cloud Academy PW exclamation point. Let's go ahead and save that and see where we're at. As you can see, WordPress has been successfully installed to the slash var www slash HTML directory, and it's now going to be accessible to us in just a moment. If we switch back over to MySQL here, you'll see that it's still listening for connections there, and we should eventually get a connection from our WordPress instance. This little green icon up here indicates that the container is running properly. What's interesting about Kitematic is that we actually get a preview of our web page before we even open a web browser. But if we click this little button up next to the web preview, it'll actually open up our web browser for us to the appropriate address. So now we can run through the typical WordPress setup, and as you can see, it's running on 192.168.99.100, port 32772. So let's go ahead and just hit continue. And we'll set a username and password. We'll type our email address for the administrator, and then we'll click on Install WordPress. We can now log in with our new username and password. So at this point, we've now set up a new WordPress instance that's running inside of a Docker container with Apache, and we've configured it to point to a MySQL database that's running inside of a separate Docker container on our Linux Docker host, which is running inside of Oracle VirtualBox on top of our Mac. We can now export these containers using the docker export command, and we can then take these containers and deploy them to a cloud environment where they would be publicly accessible and deploy our application publicly. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this.